Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm trying to adopt the attitude. Oprah says that you should never say cheese when you're getting your um, when you're getting your photo taken. You should say, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you you look like you have a better smile, and it also kind of puts you in a state of relaxation. But you're kind of like you know, kind of cool relaxation. So that's what I'm trying to do now. Hey, yeah, welcome, welcome to the podcast. Hey, don't worry about it. Just me and you. You know. Did you know I'm in love with you? <laughs> Sorry if I came a little bit too strong there. <laughs> no, look, I'm in a weird mood today. I booked this studio. I'm here in the wonderful podcast studios, the Head Stuff uh, Podcast Studios, um, in in McGinnis Place in Dublin, right? And I booked this uh, a few weeks ago because I'm I'm uh, I'm transitioning to video, right? My family are really supportive <laughs> of the choice. <laughs> Um, but I'm transitioning to video because, you know, because I don't, I'm scared (laughs) because I don't want to be left in the dust. I don't want to be one of those old timers, right? Still going away on the old talkie box, right? There are moving pictures. Yeah, you heard of them? There are such things. It was my nose. See, this is the thing about video. I don't know if my nose, do I even like, is my my nose clean? I'm going to talk amongst each other for a second. Yes. Yes, it is. No, look, I don't want to be left in the dust, right? I don't want to be like uh, the old timer on the talk box, right? So I'm transitioning to video. But it does come with its differences. It comes with its changes. This is actually probably more long form. The edits would be clear. So this is kind of more of a long form conversation. So you have to kind of be in a really really good mood to do this. And I didn't tee that up very well because I'm hungover today is one thing. And me and Terry had a fight in the car as well before I came here. And then I went to Starbucks to write a load of notes about what I was going to talk about. And I ended up up just writing everything that I was annoyed about. And then I kind of, this is what I do. I write everything I'm annoyed about. And then I realize that I'm wrong. And then I realize that Terry's right. And then I figure out how to maintain some status while totally, (laughs) while totally, while totally accepting the fact that she's right, you know? How do you be completely understanding and roll your belly over and say, I was totally wrong. Don't break up with me. While also being, but also, hey. But also, hey. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? But also, hey, I'm a fucking, I'm a, I'm a cool guy. You know, I'm also right. It's not possible. So I spent ages trying to figure that out. And as well, I am hungover, right? And this is a hangover from two days ago. And I don't get hungover much these days, right? It's almost embarrassing to talk about having a hangover these days. In your 20s, you would just live perpetually on in a, in, a, in a permanent state of being hungover. Just constant. And it was nice. It was like I felt like I was wearing a, a, a duvet onesie at all times, just staring out like, you know? I felt like I was dressed like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I'm like, I'm hungover. You can't get me. I'm, it's not my fault. I'm hungover. Of course I didn't go for the walk. I was hungover. Of course I was shit at my job. I was hungover, you know? You like it. You lump it, you know? all wrapped up in one. But now it's all like, I made a mistake. I'm nasty Nick now. Look, um, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Um. And you know as well, I was talking up all, I'm doing, I'm, I'm counting my calories at the moment. I don't have an eating disorder, but I'm counting my calories at the moment because I'm trying to gain muscle whilst losing fat. <laughs> and, and I'm counting everything, right? So I, I still went in Galway on the Raz, counting everything, right? Because just so I know, right, and I'm meant to be on a calorie deficit of about 1,800, 1,850 calories, maybe more if I exercise that day. It does, it counts the maths in the in the app, right? And I, so I'm meant to be in like 1,800 calories a day. I clocked in 4,500 calories and then I stopped counting, all right? That's in retrospect, me trying to remember the amount of pints, me trying to remember, you know, the amount of oysters that I ate, which aren't the worst thing, you know? And then I'm like, well, was there a basil uh, reduction on that? <laughs> was the, oh, I remember, oh, those oysters actually um, were kind of poached in buttermilk with a basil reduction as well. And then I'm on fucking my fitness pal. Basil reduction calories. <laughs> like, it's not a way to live. But what I realized is that four and a half thousand calories is three days worth of eating on a calorie deficit. <laughs> and that made me sad. You know, that made me sad. And then I was sitting there in Starbucks figuring that out this morning, right? And I saw, and I'm in a piece of shit mood, 
thinking I'm a piece, I'm a piece of shit. I'm I'm the exact same as that uh, floaty uh, piece of poop <laughs> in the Starbucks bathroom. I was in there, right? Nine o'clock this morning, there was piss everywhere. Who's going in there at eight o'clock and pissing all over the place? It was a disgrace. <laughs> anyway, I was in there feeling like a piece of floaty poop. And I saw these two, um, look, I'm not coming on to them, but they were young, young, pretty, <laughs> pretty girls. <laughs> they were women, right? They were, te- they were students, right? You know, but they they looked like they had their shit together. They looked nice, right? I wasn't after them. I wasn't ogling them. But they looked nice, and they looked like they look after themselves. <laughs> and I was there feeling like a piece of poop and writing down everything I was annoyed about. Because I was in one of those moods where I'm like, do you know what? Actually, it's not my fault. I am a piece of shit, but I'm trying to, like, not think about that for a while. And I'm actually trying to think about how it's actually everyone else's fault. Actually, when you think about it. So I was writing my big list of grievances on my laptop. And they were writing postcards. They were students and they were writing postcards to their friends. And they had lovely stationery. And they had like a green gel pens. And they were writing out like little postcards. And they were sitting there like, and then they'd, they'd write. And then they'd look up and they'd, and they'd smile and they'd write a little bit more. And I felt, <laughs> and it made me feel even worse. It made me feel like, oh, that's part of the story. Is they're here and I'm here. They're not related at all. They're not related at all. But because of excessive alcohol use two days ago, even though these are two completely isolated, not even atoms in the grand spectrum, the grand narrative of the universe, me hung over in Starbucks feeling like a piece of shit and them writing postcards that are me are not related whatsoever. But I am choosing to link them. And, and view them on a tiered basis, their S tier of humanity. And I'm down here in the brown poopy bin. Do you know what I mean? They're not related at all. <laughs> you know? So, um, so that's what I was feeling. And then I had the fight as well. So look, so look, this is going to be great. This is going to be a great podcast. Um, and I know, look, I know intuitive eating and all that, you shouldn't be counting calories. Well, whatever, do whatever you fucking want to do, right? But I know long term, right? I went in, I went to the Beacon Health screen place, got my health, uh, you know, did a whole a whole body checkup on me, right? And uh, your man told me I was a metabolic, metabolic age, metabolic age, metabolic age um, of a 47 year old man, you know? And he was like, Tony, curly whirly, Tony, listen. I said, listen, Mr. Doctorman, um, I'm looking to be spooked, okay? I came in here looking for a fucking ghost train, all right? I want to come in here and you tell me something and scare me like one of those things in the ghost train that go, you know, you know, you have like a skeleton falls down. I was like, Wah! I want that from you, Mr. Doctorman. So what's it going to be? Give me something I need to change. And give me something I'm going to fix. He goes, Curly Whirly, Tony, you have the m- metabolic gauge of a 47-year-old man. <laughs> um, and I'm like, right, fine. If that's the thing we're going with. Why did I bring this up? Yes, he said. He told me all about the pints, right? And then I told Terry and she was all like, "That's I've, I've told you that as well. You know? I, I mean, I'm kind con- she, she, she probably has like 20... I told you so is that she sh- doesn't say a day, you know? So I have to be like, okay, fine. One slipped, right? The dam of I told you so's, of not telling my husband I told you so, is not impermeable. Maybe a beaver got in there and dug a little hole in it and there's a bit of water. Told you so. There's one. So I can't be angry at her. You don't get angry. Whatever. You don't get angry. You accept it. You know, anyway. <laughs> So, anyway, metabolic age of a 47-year-old man. And he said as well that, um, which isn't great because I'm 34, you know, that's 13 years. There's a kid who isn't a frigid in the gap of me and my actual age. Do you know what I mean? There's some young fucking lad scoring rings around birds in a France summer camp, right? Comes back all tanned. A man. 13 years of age, this kid. Um... And, and 
<laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> Come on, you know what I was, what was I saying. Yeah, 47 year old. And he said to me, um, he told me everything about the pints. He said, look, he was all like, you go to this website, drinkaware.ie, and if you type in the number of pints that you're having, how many pints do you have in a week? I says, 10, right? Which sounds like a lot. And it is. And then he was all like, you change that over to whiskeys. Now you look at the difference there. And I was like, that's a big difference. And my sponsor, the Dubliner Irish Whiskey, would certainly love that. Listen, if you're a fan of Irish whiskey, check out the DLD.com. They are crazy with their whiskey. Am I in the ad? I think I'm in the ad. Um, <laughs> no, this podcast is sponsored by the Dubliner Irish Whiskey. This is not an ad to actually transition me into whiskey, right? But anyway, the Dublin Irish Whiskey are the very um, incredible sponsor of this uh, week's podcast, this week's video cast. Um, go to the DLD.com. What I like about the Dubliner is they don't take themselves so seriously, right? They've got a tasty whiskey. It's an Irish whiskey distilled out of the heart of the liberties in Dublin 8, I think. Dublin something. <laughs> they pay for this. And um, and they're, they just put it, they age it in different types of casks. Sometimes a bourbon cask. Give it a hint of the Wild Wild West. Sometimes they age it in like, you know, beer casks. When they partner with like Rascals Brewing Company, they have a smoked stout. They have an old fashioned type one that has like all star anise and bits of orange in it. Tastes like a cocktail. It's amazing. The DLD.com. The Dubliner Irish Whiskey. Thanks very much. But anyway, he was trying to transition me over to whiskey. We wasn't. He was just saying, I'm just telling you the differences that you can have, Tony, in the, in the calorie intake. You know, that's two days of eating. He said it to me. And then it happened to me, you know. But anyway, what else did he say? He said something else. that I, That's the main reason I started talking. Mm, don't remember. But anyway, he told me all this. He didn't scare me enough, though, you know. Neat, you know. They're very polite, you know what I mean? I mean, they got to be saying it, you know. They can't be like, they get so many people in there. They can't be all like, look me. Don't you fucking ever eat another chicken wing. Promise me. Promise me you'll never eat another chicken wing. They can't do that like every, like twenty times a day, you know. So they have to be like, look, I can't put everything into this, you know. I can't put my heart and soul into stopping this guy from drinking pints. So I have to like gingerly tell him, you know, which is not what I was paying for, you know. I want tough love, but like when I want it, you know. Although, look, in terms of the feeling like a piece of shit, like what's the name of the scale? There's a scale for the viscosity I think it's like maybe the, the Bristol scale for the viscosity of shit um, poop scale is that the Bristol scale hang on talk about jazz there for a second the Bristol stool chart right it's types of poop right um, it's also known as the Myers scale but he was like hey don't be calling hey don't be naming a fucking poop scale after me Name of the fucking Bristol scale. Um, so type one is um, separate hard lumps like nuts that are hard to pass. Type two is a sausage shaped but lumpy shit. Type three is sausage shaped with cracks on the surface. Type four is a, this is gross. This is gross. But type seven is watery, entirely liquid. So I would say in terms of the feeling like a piece of shit scale, I'm kind of in the sausage or snake-like smooth and soft, which is a type four on the Bristol scale. Um, when there were times, I'm not going to lie, I was type six. It only goes up to seven, where I was type six or type seven. You know, I used to have these day nightmare fantasies where I would just be at home, maybe a little bit high on marijuana, uh, eating cold chicken that was still in my room. You know, which is not to judge, not to judge people who want to polish it off in the morning, you know, but I would be like that after phoning in sick to work. Right. And I would have fantasies about Triple H kicking my door down, saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I'd be like, I don't know. And start crying. Right. I used to have fantasies about that. Not that he would like. Not that it would even like, you know, take my hand. I'm going to make you a superstar. You know, nothing like that. But he would just almost like just take me. Do you know you fantasize about taking yourself down an, an even lower peg? You know, I mean, off the Bristol scale of feeling like poop. So um, I used to fantasize. So I don't really have that anymore. You know, I do have to say, having a, a child, it really makes it hard to feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> I, you know, it's, you know, 
if I can be if I, if I can be a bit saccharine sweet for a minute, you know, even just lying around with him, even though I was, you know, I should have been playing with him and we just put on Buzz Lightyear on Disney Plus, which is a not a good, not a good film. I've had my issues with that. I've already talked about it on this podcast before, right? This is the movie Andy saw from Toy Story in 1994. No, it's not. No, it's not. Mm-mm. No, it's not. It's not. That's fine. That's fine. All right? There was a rogue marketeer. Got caught up. Had a bit of fun in the marketing. That's okay. Okay? It was you just was having a bit of a laugh. Right? He's probably the first person that if we went into a recession would probably get su- sacked. Right? All you marketeers are going. <laughs> All you marketeers are going. All right? You know, everyone does like, you see one of those like Zoom meetings <laughs> and there's like nine people in the Zoom meeting. Three of them are getting sacked in the next year. <laughs> Sorry to break it to you. I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not what am I going to do in a recession? What am I going to do? It's going to be tough for me too, the recession that's coming. But the marketeers are going to be the first in line. <laughs> so, and I'm not, that's not good. No recession is good. Anyway, um, but having a, having a child really does help you not feel like a piece of shit because he thinks that I'm cool, you know? We have a thing now. Look, I already, look, you know, I like the sound of my, I like the sound of my voice, right? And I, it's clear that he does too because I sing to him and I sing to him a lot. And then when I finish, he goes, again, 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 like Caesar in, uh, like, uh, like in Gladiator, you know, Joaquin Phoenix, <laughs> he says. After I sing, you know, he loves it. He goes, that was a good song, Daddy. You know, so he loves that. Is that am I, you hearing me all right? Um, so he loves that. So, but now sometimes I just tell him about stuff. I was, tell, I was talking to him for like half an hour just about Babu Frick yesterday. Babu Frick. The one good thing from Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Tiny little fella, right? Tiny little mechanic, right? Um, and he's like, he's stupid. But you just see him and you're like, this is, hey, now Babu Frick I can get into, you know, because he's just a tiny animatronic puppet that is knows everything about droids. And it's a shit film and I've only seen it once and I'm never going to see it again, right? Um, I'm laying, I'm laying Disney a new butthole right now, right? They're going to feel like they just had type 7 on the poop scale after I'm done with them, the Bristol scale, after I'm done with them. Um... No, what was the same? Babu Frick. Yeah, I was just talking to him about Babu Frick. And I'm like, because I have a T-shirt of Babu Frick. Um, and he's like, who's that? And I'm like, that's Babu Frick. Babu Frick is so small, I tell him. He is so small. I talk to him like he is a tiny Spanish student, is the way I talk to my son. Babu Frick is so small, but he knows everything, I tell him. He can fix anything, Babu Frick. Babu Frick can fix spaceships. Babu Frick can fix droids. They are robots. And he's like, loving it, you know. And then he's like, Daddy, that's Babu Frick. And I'm like, it is Babu Frick, you know. And I tell him about everything. He's like, Daddy, tell me about Spider-Man. And I say, Spider-Man can stick to anything. Obviously not anything. I didn't go into the details. I didn't go into the comics about some of the, you know, obviously Spider-Man's been trapped many times and he's had his powers removed. I didn't go into that kind of detail. He can figure that out later and be surprised, you know. He can stick to the ceiling. He can stick to the wall. <laughs> he can swing. You know? So I tell him about this. It's really, it's amazing. Because it's what I want to talk about anyway, all the time. And now he listens to it. So it's hard not to feel like a piece of shit. I mean, he's listened to that shit. The other day we were driving in the car. We were driving down to my dad's and um, we were talking about film franchises, right? And I tried to steer the conversation into Avatar again. <laughs> and Terry said, I was like, okay, you, there might be Marvel fatigue in the next couple of years. I don't think the Lord of the Rings, exactly all the shit I've been saying to you, right? I don't think this Lord of the Rings thing is going to pay off for this TV show. Game of Thrones is done. Warner Brothers have mishandled Harry Potter. This DC extended universe. And Terry's like, listen to all this. And Terry knows her shit when it comes to this as well. And franchises, we're talking about this, right? And I was like, so when you're really looking at franchises, you look at Avatar. And Terry says, 
you're not talking about Avatar. She says, we are not having another conversation about Avatar. <laughs> she said to me, you can't talk to me. And she wasn't even joking. She was annoyed. You can't talk to me about Avatar until Avatar comes out. And I sat there, went red faced. And I wasn't angry. I was like, I have been talking about Avatar too much. But Terry's not here. <laughs> and I think Avatar is going to be the greatest film franchise. Here, here's the video. Evidence, right? People in five years' time are going to be taking this clip now and saying, he said it. He was right. Avatar is going to be the biggest film franchise ever. <laughs> no. Mm, it will, though. It will, though. Look, this is where I, this is what I was saying to Terry before she's so rudely interrupted. Anyway, the point I was getting is that I can say to my, talk to my son about this. He, I can just talk to him and I can be like, Sonny, do you know about the Navi? <laughs> and he'd be like, no. The Navi people, they are so tall. And they are blue. <laughs> and they have tails that are, they can wrap into like fucking like pterodactyls and shit. <laughs> you know? And do you know the legend of Jake Sully? I can say to my son. So, you know, we had, so the, that's, that's, that's helping me feel like I'm not on the Bristol scale, but we've moved on to that now. Avatar, right? This is what I think, what I think, right? I love my Marvel movies. You know I do, right? I think Disney have some very tasty IPs that I want, that I eat up at the big bowl, in a big bowl, right? I eat it up in a big bowl. Um, I take a straw and I drink your milkshake or whatever. I don't remember it. As soon as I started, I was like, I, if I don't know the line, then I shouldn't be doing Daniel, Daniel Day-Lewis. Anyway, I eat it up, right? But if you're looking at IPs and film franchises, right? I, I, like, I'm just going to repeat what I was saying. I just think there's going to be a bit of Marvel fatigue in the next couple of years. Um, it's just, it is too much. And I'm surprised that DC are doing what they're doing to do the extended universe kind of thing. If you're not aware, there's a new CEO of, I'm only going to talk about this for a few minutes, okay? And then I'll get back to being a silly billy in a second, right? The new CEO of Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers have fused with Discovery. They're now Warner, or Warner Brothers Discovery, right? And their CEO has been fairly cutthroat. He's been fairly cutthroat. Binned the Batgirl movie. Spent 90 million on it. They're just not going to release it. Hasn't passed quality control. Or just doesn't fit in with their plan. Michael Keaton was back as Batman for it, right? They're potentially going to bin, and I could date myself here, uh, the Flash movie with Ezra Miller. Because he's just been the worst thing. He was like, I can't believe he's like the lead villain actor in their Harry Potter franchise and the essential multiverse crooks of their DC franchise, right? And he's just still, and he's fucked both of them, right? He's a despicable, despicable man. You might even call him Gru. This Ezra Miller reminds me a lot of Gru because he's despicable. Huh? Hey, Ezra Miller, do you like bananas? Well, you're despicable. How do you like them bananas? <laughs> hmm? Anyway, so, um, but they're going to start trying and do what they, they're going to try and do what they had Zack Snyder rush in the span of like three years of building an entire DC universe, right? A connected DC universe. They rushed it because they saw Marvel had Avengers, right? And they didn't realize that that took years. So they have a 10-year plan. And they're going to start fresh. I don't know if that's the best thing for them. And this is my reason for it. I understand why they want to do that. Because the thing about the MCU is the fact that they're connected. There's a gotta catch them all nature to people going into the box office and going every single time. Like how pe Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Doctor Strange 2. One of the biggest films of the year. Right? If not the biggest. It's insane. And would that be the case if he hadn't been in Endgame? You know what I mean? If he was just isolated and wasn't connected. So I understand how important that is to get people, not important, how much value there is to the, to the corporation. This is, not, this is not funny. Whatever. The point I'm getting at is I liked what DC were doing 
where they were just getting directors, like saying, hey, James Gunn, here's all our periphery characters. Blow them up if you want. Do whatever the fuck you want, you know? Hey, um, Todd Phillips, the twisted mind of Todd Phillips, right? Uh, here's uh, Oscar winner Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, do Kings of Comedy as the Joker, whatever you want to do. Just do it. Makes a billion, right? Hey, uh, now we do a musical with Lady Gaga. You know what I mean? Just take the characters and have them do whatever they want. Marvel have tried to do that a little bit with Chloe Zhao and Sam Raimi, but they haven't been able to relinquish enough control to allow those creatives to have their full vision, right? So, Mar- so DC has just been like, seem to have been like, do whatever you want and take the characters. But now this idea that they have to be connected might just be me, but I feel like there might be a bit of fatigue with that. And also, as we've even seen with Matt Reeves' Batman, it's hard to have new stories that people can kind of get behind. All the stories have kind of been done. And it's the same people again. Like, it's the same characters, right? And I know these are fairy tale, evergreen characters, and there's different stories that you can project and different morals that you can show for these characters, you know? And But I just, I just think that we're going to have a bit of fatigue with these characters. And having an original... IP like Avatar 2, mate. Hong, do you know what a Navi is? Um, I think original IPs should be valued and should be treated and respected on a higher plane, right? Not be, not be, stop slagging Avatar. You know, I don't think this Lord of the Rings thing, it might work out, but you know. It's bad enough having like Star Wars prequels where it's like, hey, you know Anakin and you know Boba Fett? Imagine they're kids, you know? Hey, um, you know Frodo? You know Sam and and Gandalf? Yeah, you know like a a thousand years before they were born? Well, (laughs) we're going to show that, you know? It's like, how do you have your cake and eat it too? Where you're like, let's put a billion into this. One of the most important famous IPs and franchises ever, Lord of the Rings, right? But just tell the stories for absolute. Let's have it the biggest show ever that we want everyone to watch. Targeted towards the most niche of niche Lord of the Rings fans who have read the Samarillion. And I'm not having a go. People think I don't like Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings, right? And I love those characters. I would just like to see more of those characters. Um. So anyway, that's that's that. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling a bit better. You know. Anyway, what else? I was in France. I was in France there for a while. Well, not a while. I was in there for a week. I Look at me. Look at me. I was fucking destroyed by mosquitoes. Well, not really. Like, they got my legs. And everyone had an opinion on it. Don't scratch them. Don't scratch your legs. Why are you scratching your legs? You're going to scar. They kept saying to me. My wife kept saying to me. She's right. Of course she's right. And I don't, like, have, like, no, listen, I, the reason I'm right about scarring myself permanently is, you know, I don't have a point, you know. But, it's not, you know, I was attacked in the middle of the night. And then I'm wrong for scratching. I'm wrong. So I was attacked. And then I'm being uh, taken apart uh, on an intellectual level for my reaction to being attacked by essentially a ghost in the middle of the night. And just haunting, going by my ear like, Ooh, little buzzing in my ear. And my so- my son's gorgeous skin was left completely unscathed. Don't know why they came for me. They never come for me. These must have been hungry fuckers, these mosquitoes, because they never come for me. You know? They won't be coming for me again. Well, they will. I'm shit at catching mosquitoes. Terry has this, I don't know what is up with her family. They have this kung, they have a kung fu flu. Fu- fu- don't cancel me for that. I said a word wrong, right? They have a kung fu reflex for catching mosquitoes. Terry could catch a mosquito with a chopstick a mile away by throwing it. <laughs> they don't know how they do it. Well, I'm just marveled by anyone's good hand-eye coordination because I lack it, right? You know, I'm there playing table tennis and I'm like waiting for the ball and it's already gone, you know? Like, all right, when are you going to tee off? I have tee off. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Serve. When are you going to serve? I have. Pick up the ball. You know, it happens that quick. Which one of y'all kick me, Chris Tucker? Everything happens fast to me. I'm kind of like the Flash in that way. Everything's kind of slow around me, you know. I'm kind of in the the speed force, or whatever the fuck that is, you know. Whatever the Oscar-winning moment was. 
the Oscar winning moment, a best crowd moment is Ezra Miller <laughs> entering the Speed Force in the re in the uncut version of a film that came out five years ago. What Matrix shit are we living in? But uh, everything's very slow to me, you know, you know. But that's why I think I see things on a different level. I don't. I miss everything. Terry sees things move very fast, and she also will like stop in the middle of the the, the street and be like, "Look at the color of that bush," you know. Ha <laughs> ha. We're talking about you know, if, uh, you know, like a bush, <laughs> not like a, not pubes or anything. <laughs> I'm not talking about pubes, guys. No, but like so, you know, she's more, she's more perceptive. But I have very good ideas. What am I talking about? And anyway, look, I was riddled with bites from these little fuckers, right? And now I really didn't appreciate it. Then getting up the next morning and being like, "You need to stop scratching." Everyone's like, "Stop!" The whole family's like, "Stop scratching!" And they're trying to save me, like the Flash saved those people, the Justice League, when he entered the Speed Force. I like French supermarkets, and I cannot lie. You other markets can't deny that when you see some wine and it's really marked down and you want to buy and buy, you get stung by mosquitoes. I mean, everywhere. No, there. I love going in there and looking at the wine scene. See that? See that bottle of wine? That'd be that. It's 20 quid in Ireland. No one's even known there. Some old French man like, what? What do you fucking say? What do you fucking say to me? You know? <laughs> you know? You know the French? So I'd be like, hey, monsieur, see that wine? In Ireland. That'd be fucking loads, you know, but they don't care. <laughs> they just don't listen to me <laughs> when I'm there. No, they don't care. No, whatever. No, the point I'm saying is that um, I love going in and looking at that. And then you go to like the uh, the exotic food aisle and it's all El Paso. And they're like, mm, 20 quid for a bottle, for, for a box of uh, enchilada uh, prep. It's mad. You see stuff like, you know, Kerwoods. Kerwoods. Um, oriental spice mix or whatever and it's really expensive all this shit that we take for granted right you see all that in there and it's mad expensive but then you got like really nice deli meats anyway I was desperate to try and just go to a supermarket on my own because I love it I need time on my own I'm an introverted extrovert right that's our logo right the introverted extrovert we do an X over our chest right um, so I need time to get away long poos are essential um you know, me saying, does anyone want it from the shop? I'm actually just going to go and, you know, it's, it's my way of saying, I love you all. But I need to be with my thoughts right now. Okay? <laughs> you know? So I need that. If we went like four days without me having a few little breaks here and there, on the fourth day, you'd look at me and you'd be like, Tony, what you want for breakfast? And I'd be like, just I wouldn't even talk. I don't even engage. Like, hmm. That'd be me. Hmm. And I'm not like that. Right, so I need time to act like a fucking nice guy because on day four the mask starts slipping. I can only keep the mask on for so fucking long, right? The mask will slip, and you'll really see what I am—a type seven piece of shit on the Bristol scale. They do things a little differently over there, the French. You know, they're just so cool. Like a a child, a newborn baby would sit there with a glass of wine. You know, they just really chill over there. Not like those piece of shit. Not like those type five Bristol scale poops, you know. Um, they just tr- had the alcohol. They just treat it differently there. They're just legends. They're just really better. They've a higher GDP and they're nicer people. And the children drink wine and they're not alcoholics, so they're just amazing. The French. Um, but uh, I was trying to speak a lot of French over there, you know. And um, and Terry, <laughs> it was one point where Terry wanted a decaf because she's pregnant. My darling wife is pregnant. We're going to have a baby in November. Please God, touch wood, right? You, you, I'm not a religious guy, but I am a super, not an even superstitious guy. But I do say, please God, and touch wood. Whoever that goes to, I don't know if that, if that little, you know, please God, touch wood, ends up as some sort of, you know, message to some sort of space god. And they're like, why do I keep getting these fucking messages out of this guy? You know? It must be some combination of words where he's saying, you know, oh, please God, touch wood. The message is going out there. The will for everything to go safely, right, has gone out there. And some space god's like, I'm getting all these fucking messages from this Clem, Tony Cantwell. He doesn't even believe me. He doesn't believe in that. Anyway, whoever that message is going to, please make it so. So Terry um, so Terry is drinking. She's not drinking caffeinated drinks. She's drinking decaf. So we were in France 
and they do things a little differently in France where they don't really care how long anything takes. Apart from, surprisingly, they give the kids food first, which is very nice, you know. I remember rallying against that when I was a child. My dad wanted me to become a lawyer. He was all like, very strong views on children being served first in restaurants. I wrote a manifesto when I was uh, seven or eight about rights for children. (laughs) I did. And my dad still has it and regularly brings it up. Um, But look, are we not the judges and jury now? Us comics. Are we not the lawmakers, the the banter providers, the... um, the social changers. Look, it's a lot on our plate. We didn't choose this, but we have it now. And it's not a responsibility that we take lightly. And we are going to offend some of you. I probably offended like 90% of you already on this podcast. But um, look, we're not going anywhere. Mr. Bush, Mr. Blair, we're not going anywhere. We're here to stay. And <laughs> anyway, look, what was I saying? She wanted a decaf coffee. (laughs) So I went in, and they do things a little differently. They do things a little slower in France. So there was one woman taking the orders. She would take the order, and then she would go make it, and then she would deliver it, and then she would go back to the first person and take the order, right? And that's fine. I hated it, but it's fine. Because I respect people's differences, because I'm not a xenophobe, okay? Uh, I'm not an alien from the alien franchise. I've never fought Predator, okay? I like people. Um... I still need to see Prey. Anyway, um, so it was taking ages, and I ordered two coffees, right? And I ordered one. Decaffeineo, decaffeineo. Du latte. Decaffeineo. This was exactly the thing the family were asking me to stop doing, was the voice, right? Um, But I think the voice is key. But they were probably like, oh, my God, what part of France are you from? Because you sound exactly like a French person, right? Are you from Paris? I don't know. I couldn't think of anyone else, right? Um. Do uh, you do two cat? I do a coffee the uh, uh, on uh, the cafe. No, no toi, no toi, no, no toi cafe, the cafe, and uh, in uh, the cafe, cap latte, marshal de holé, right? So I was saying this to this woman, and then she gave me two cafes, and I was all like, uh, the cafe, uh, the cafe, uh, you a, you a. UA, the bibliotheque first, right? Because you always need to know where the bibliotheque is. And then UA, where is um, the decaffeinate coffee, right? And this took fucking eight. And we, to be fair, we saw the queue for the cafe, right? And it was big. And we have a son who's only got like five minutes of standing still time max in a day. So if we're not moving, <laughs> fuck you. Do you know what I mean? With the greatest respect. He says that to us. With the greatest respect. I know you. I like you, right? You're really good. I love you telling me about Babu Frick. I like finding out where Spider-Man can stick. But countdown. Number three and number two. You know he's counting. He was singing countdown. He sings countdown by Beyonce while he was anyway, whatever. So, <laughs> so I saw the queue, and I said, Terry, that looks big, and I know how they do things a little differently here in France. Okay, so it's going to take ages. Is this any good? This story. So it's going to take things. It's going to take a little while. So um. Anyway, so she says, no, it's fine. I'll go walk up and down the boardwalk, right? And then when I come back, we'll be, we'll be ready. So you took a long walk on the boardwalk, but it took me about 20 minutes queuing up for this coffee, right? Because it's a little different. So then I get the coffee, and I say, uh, le decaffeine? Où est uh, le decaffeine? And she goes, decaffeine? No. Decaffeine? No, no, no. No decaffeinated. No, neither of them are decaffeinated. And I'm like, oh. And I was like, uh, un uh, decaffeine, please. Monsieur de Holé, s'il vous plaît, right? And she goes, no, you, and she points, like, I have to queue up again to the back of the queue. And I was thinking to myself, look, I know you do things a little differently here, but you fucked it. You fucked it, okay? So I, you, you know, I said with my eyes. But then I thought, this is going to take ages. I knew this was going to be a long queue to begin with. So I left, and I walked away with these two coffees. And I said to Terry, look, one of them isn't decaf, right? One of them isn't decaf. We're going to have to queue somewhere else. And she goes, why didn't you tell them that they had to give you a decaf? And I was like, I did, and they had me queue up again. And she goes, why didn't you refuse to pay? She said, why, well, why didn't you refuse to pay? Because you didn't buy that. And I'm like, I thought you didn't want me speaking French. And now you're asking me in pigeon French, right, to argue and say, I refuse to part with my arrogate if you don't give me a decaffeinate, and I will actually cause a scene. Like, this is, and I was like, let's just go somewhere else. And I'm like, and I'm like, I can't. 
And she's like, no, like, oh, I, I, all, like, I can't have Antlum. We're here on this fucking holiday. I can't have a fucking, you know, I can't have any booze, you know. Been waiting ages. All I really want is a decaf coffee. Like, I, and, you know, she didn't know that I gave your one a really, like, hard stare. Like Paddington. You know? She didn't know that. Well, she did. But she was really like, you should have just got, is this any good? <laughs> she was like, you should have refused to pay. And I was like, I can't, I, I'm, you know, I can't keep up. Do you want me being French or not? Right? I mean, I could have been like, no, no, no. I'd already paid as well. Can you, imagine me saying this. Uh, can you return them my, uh, my Apple Pay then? I paid with Apple Pay. I want the refund back on my cat and me cart on my Apple Pay. You know, wasn't going to do that. Anyway, wonderful time in France. That was a shite story. Look at me. What? Why do you fucking waste my time with this shit? Coming in here, setting up. Set, you set up a camera. No, Gary. Gary's creeping back in because I'm a little bit hungover. I'm a number three on the Bristol scale today, okay? I was able to come in here. I did it, right? Anyway, what else? Another thing, right? We were away. I get on very well with Terry's family. And they now kind of get how I talk, where sometimes I just say shit is in like kind of like, they're used to people like saying something for there to be like, a, and there to be a point, <laughs> like there to be a point in why you said that. You know what I mean? I used to say, like I kept talking about how mad prawns are, right? The prawns are mad. You know, I don't know. I, they get it now. And they're like, oh, he's doing like a kind of not even a half joke, just a bare, barely a Twitter draft, <laughs> barely a shower thought. But he's chosen to say this out loud, and we're very courteous to him because we welcome him into the family. So, but I kept talking about mostly to Terry about how mad prawns are, right? And how scary they look. <laughs> you know, they're scary. They're really, you know, they have little black eyes, right? Now, I love prawns. I love eating prawns, right? I love eating their little legs. I eat the cr- I eat their legs. I'm not supposed to eat their legs. I eat their legs. I eat their little tails. I eat their little tails as well, right? I love a bit of crunch in my prawn as well. And I also kind of do it to be a fucking, be a, like, there's not many times I get to be feral, like primal. But eating a bougie prawn tail and all is kind of fucking hardcore for me, right? I love it. I feel cooler (laughs) having done it, right? So I'm eating these prawns. And I kept saying, isn't it mad how scary prawns look? Like, they look like something out of space. They look like something out of Ender's Game, you know? Like, the idea of a shellfish or an insectoid is a terrifying-looking villain, right? Or monster, because they're just so, like, they just have to. Their eyes, just like, they eat you. And be like, their legs, like, and you're, like, screaming while they're nibbling your head off, right? Like, ah! You know? And like, terrifying concept if we were to swap sizes with prawns and they could fly. And they could fly because I don't see them walking around. Oh, maybe though. Maybe they just straighten out their back. Um. Anyway, I was just thinking about how mad it is and that an adult-sized prawn would be the scariest thing in the world, right? Yet here I am with a mound of the skulls of the fallen prawns who have tried to best me by being fried in uh, chili oil. They tried their best to come for me, these prawns. But I have eaten them and I sit there with a mound of their skulls, like Vigo the Carpathian. I sat on a throne of blood, or a throne of skulls and a river of blood. Right? That's what I do. They need to fear me. You know? I'm like the Genghis Khan of prawns. But everyone is. The amount of prawns we eat. And chicken. I don't like thinking about that one. But um, prawns. And I'd bring that up around the dinner and they'd be like, like he seems to have, he seems to have stopped talking. So what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> he seems to have stopped talking now. Ah! Do you know these prawns? Why are you, <laughs> you know? Um, but that's mad, isn't it? A weird thing about how scary they look, but we sh- they, they are probably terrified of us. You know, and muscles as well. I mean, I know they have no nervous system, but like, <laughs> fucking wild animal. Like a fucking 
with our little canines like, <laughs> chewing a fucking uh, muscle out of its shell, tearing open its fucking en- exoskeleton, and we're <laughs> then using using the corpse of another muscle to pick out the other fucking muscles. It's wild shit. And that's how we live. That's how I live. You know? Another mad thing, right? The Rock... The Rock's Instagram stories get brighter on my phone. I don't know if this is just me, right? I don't know if this is Instagram saying, hey, pig, eat this eat this truffle, you fucking piece of crap, right? Or if it's based on my algorithm, my habits. But I've gone off The Rock, right? I've gone off The Rock, right? Off me rocker, more like... It's me off my rocker, right? No, I've gone off the rock, Dwayne Johnson. And hey, stop trying to make DJ happen. Your name's The Rock, okay? New rule, old rule. Your name's The Rock, okay? That's your name. Dwayne's not happening. Dwayne The Rock Johnson's not happening. Dwayne Johnson, DJ, is especially not happening. You're The Rock. Deal with it. You're the wrestler, The Rock. I, uh, you know, if you are watching this, I'd be a lot more shy. But um, his Instagram stories, your Instagram stories, Rock, get brighter on my phone for some reason. Everything else goes darker. And it actually gets abnormally bright to the point where my phone gets hot. Okay? I had to call the fucking HB ice cream van to cool my phone down the other day. Right? It was so hot from these stories. And I never agreed to this. I never agreed that something could be showcased like that on my phone. Imagine we were just walking around here in the real world and all of a sudden people just had a halo around them. We didn't agree to that. I mean, they could probably do that if they bought it themselves, which is fine. And maybe if The Rock did buy that. No, that's not okay. Maybe it is. I don't know. But imagine someone just, gl- people just glowed brighter, you know? We're communicating through Instagram. We're communicating through Snapchat and WhatsApp. I know use Snapchat. I'm a bit of a be real guy because I'm real. So... I'm actually a real guy, so. Um, right? WhatsApp, Facebook, have you used that? These are actually how we communicate 90% of the time. So, you know, you can't just... I don't know the point I'm making. I think I'm making that... You can't be very... You can't just be so flippant with changes. Every single change, design change, should be democratized. We should be able to decide whether that's the case or not. Although, hey, when the product is free... You're the product. When the app is for free, then you are the commodity. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, prawns are weird. Look, I hope you've enjoyed this video podcast. Um, I'm going to apologize to Terry for my behavior this morning. Um, I'm going to have a lie down. And I'm going to eat well. And you should do the same. I love you. All the best. Bye-bye.